Oh, Jeff. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Pam. Good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good, and welcome to Gigi in the 561. I really appreciate you taking time out uh, to be with us uh, this evening. With Well, it's evening for me. Um, listen, everyone. It's kind of evening here, too, so I'm, it I'm is. ready. But thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much. Good. Uh, Jeff Cos, along with his sister, Roberta Cos, uh, are co-owners of uh, something you people are going to want to know more and more about, even though we've written about them already on our website, NorthPalmBeachLife.com. You need to hear what this man has to say, because when the tagline of a company says, taste the cookie, not the cannabis, uh-huh, I have your attention now. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a chuckle there. Yeah, the cookies and the and the and the candies that we're going to talk about, Mm-mm, they're not they're not uh, they're not what you may be used to, everyone. So, thank you again so much for being here. And uh, I sure. can say firsthand that um, I thought I had really eaten Snickerdoodles uh, that I loved so much until I ate Dr. Norm's Snickerdoodle cookies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I really I'd love to take all the credit, but I do have to shout out my sister and partner Roberta, uh, who is the the baker and uh, recipe designer, and she has channeled our mother. I know we'll get into the story of Dr. Norms mm-hmm. in a little bit, but but my mom was quite the prolific baker, and uh, so we started our whole journey based on our mom's original chocolate chip cookie, and you know as as things grew, um, Roberta you know, kept going back to, to the drawing board and finding new, new flavors. So she, she's really tireless and really a perfectionist and does not rest until it's perfect in her mind. And uh, so the snickerdoodle, it's a, it's a gluten-free snickerdoodle, I might add. Oh, so, that's really, um, yeah. mm. so it, it does not taste gluten-free and it, it is my favorite cookie that we, that we make. So you, you we, we agree on that one. Um, they really it's a, are. It's yummy. They, they, yes. And it's like, how can this still be so soft? I mean, it was just, it's fantastic. I, I just loved it, as well as the, your, the jelly beans are, are wonderful. And uh, all the products are, are, I can really, really recommend them. They're wonderful. But I love the name of your company, uh, Dr. Norms, because I love how you got this thing started, um, uh, honoring your both of your parents. Sure. How, do we have a few hours? Because this is a long story. <laughs> <laughs> Take um, as long no, as you want. I will try to be brief because we don't want to put anybody to sleep here. But um, So it's named after our dad, um, who was Dr. Norman Cause. Uh, he was a dermatologist. We grew up in the San Fernando Valley in Southern California in, in L.A. And our mom, Audrey, was also in the healthcare world. She was a hospital pharmacist. So she had a full-time job in a hospital pharmacy and raised three kids. Uh, I don't know how she did it, actually. She was definitely a, ahead of her time in those days because women, women didn't do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she was, she was amazing. And it, it, in addition to all that, she was a baker, a very passionate baker. And she baked these chocolate chip cookies that were to die for. And everybody knew her and of, of her cookies, and she would go. They were like her calling card. Somehow she always had a batch of chocolate chip cookies in her car, so she would arrive at somebody's house or whatever and say, Pam, I want you to have a plate of these chocolate chip cookies. She'd know your name. She'd know, and, and if you had one somewhere else, she'd be like, oh, I remember, Pam, you enjoyed my cookies. Here's, here's a plate. So she really spread her goodwill with her cookies, amongst other things, but you know, we'll, we'll keep the cookies front and center for this, for this uh, discussion. So um, she you know, was sort of a, an angel walking, walking earth uh, with her cookies. And I'm not exaggerating because people, you know, really adored her. And she passed away rather unexpectedly um, and pretty suddenly in, in 2005. So my sister Roberta had had a long career at MTV Networks. Um, she had left uh, shortly before that to uh, become a full-time mom for her kids who were getting a little bit, you know, in – school age years and and she wants to do that Mm -hmm. so she decides after my mom passes that she is going to have a legacy of my for my mom and learn how to bake 
her chocolate chip cookies. So my mom, of course, did not leave a recipe behind. Oh, no. But we knew that she started, this is, you know, I, I don't know if I should say this on a podcast it, for the public, but she, she started with a Betty Crocker cookie mix. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's not a good thing, okay? That's, that's, <laughs> this is like, that's a dark family secret that I'm letting out of the bag here. Oh. So, so she, um, that was her, so Roberta, I believe, went, started with, with that also and, and kind of reverse engineered the cookie and lo and behold, she made an amazing chocolate chip cookie that was, just did exactly like our mom's. So, and then she eventually phased out the Betty Crocker mix and did it all with homemade ingredients. Oh, wow. So um, she learned how to bake, never baked a cookie in her life, and decided that she would take this and start a little online business. So I was in the music industry for my whole life, um, composing and producing music and performing a little bit here and there. Uh, and um, so I used to give her cookies to my clients for the holidays or for birthdays or what have you. Dave, uh, my brother, that who you know very well, Dave Cost, this world-famous saxophonist, yeah. uh, used to give his cookies to, um, you know, revert his cookies to his, uh, you know, record executives and all that. And just a, a slight aside here, um, Dave, actually my mom takes, took credit for Dave's success because she used to give her chocolate chip cookies to all the radio promotion people. So, what a and, mother. Oh, wow. And all the people at Capitol Records. So they <laughs> knew her, her. As, well as, as well as they knew my brother. They knew her from her cookies, and so she thinks that, you know, his sax playing was, was pretty good, but it was the cookies <laughs> that kind of put him over the top. <clears throat> the real deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, anyway, so Roberta, you know, wanted to continue that legacy, and so she started um, making the cookies and, and started um, selling them online. That turned into uh, a, a cookie company called Cookies for a Cause. I guess I'm telling the long version of the story here. Just tell me to please shut up. Please do. Too, no, no, please long, don't shut up. No, long, no, no. Long-winded. So Cookies for a Cause, K-O-Z, and that is because she partnered with the Starlight Foundation uh, that my brother is a global ambassador. Wow. And uh, so Starlight was a beneficiary of, the cookies, and she got them into Gelson's, which is a, a local chain in Southern California, and um, what you call it, um, Home Goods, uh, and also uh, Bristol Farms. So, um, but this was her sort of first round, and she hired this consultant who told her that she needed to create a state a shelf stable cookie. So they were nothing like her homemade cookies, and you know she brought them to me and said, "What do you think?" And I, you know, it's your sister. And you have to be polite, and she got it right. the Gelson's and all that. So it's like, oh my God, this is amazing. But the cookies were just not as good as the original homemade uh, mom's cookies. So, um, but she did okay with those. But ultimately, it was not a success at, with the stores, and she sort of folded up that tent. But kept kept doing it online. Kept, and um, maybe a year later, she got a meeting with Whole Foods, and made her homemade cookies again and brought in eight different flavors, um, including red velvet, um, I think three or four different shortbreads, chocolate chip, um, um, what do you call it, white chocolate chip cranberry, uh, and blew them away. They were like, oh, my God, these are amazing. We want to order these from you, but you're doing it all wrong. You can't do this whole shelf-stable business. What we want you to do is bake them fresh, freeze them. You sell them to us frozen. We put them in our fresh section. We, you know, thaw them out basically, and we sell them next to like our Whole Foods chocolate chip cookies that we make in in store. Oh. So you don't have to compete in the in the you know the, in the cookie aisle either. So thus, uh, the second round of Roberta's Cookie Company was born, and I got involved when I found out that Whole Foods bought them. Um, I have a very entrepreneurial streak. I I'm was in the music industry as I said for many decades. Uh, doing music for television and film and records, and I worked a lot with my brother in his early years. Um, and so I helped her with uh, branding and marketing ideas. And so one of the first things that we did, and she hated hates me for it still, but I said she had to change the name from Cookies for a Cause to uh, something that was catchy that people because Cookies for a Cause it was sort of that you know there was a a, a beneficiary a cause market beating the Starlight Foundation, but it was very hard to understand that. So yeah. 
uh, I convinced her to change the name to Audrey's Cookies, which was our mom's name. And uh, so she actually eventually loved that idea. And Audrey's Cookies was born. And so we were in Whole Foods. Um, Roberta is an amazing salesperson. So she got Audrey's Cookies into Sprouts, into Spader Brothers, Vaughn's, Albertsons, Costco. Oh, wow. Um, quite, quite a you know, large distribution. But she also was a bootstrapped company and just didn't have a whole lot of money for marketing. So here she is competing, you know, in these amazing retailers, but competing against brands that have huge marketing budgets and, you know, and people out in the field doing demos, you know, and so we did a lot of that, but it was very hard to compete, but, you know, kind of holding our own. And it was 2015. Are you asleep yet, Pam? Or are you still with me? I am loving everything that you're saying. This, no, Please I, this don't could stop. Be, this, this could be the most boring story ever told. It's to, not. To man, believe but, me. No. Okay. I'm a little self-conscious. Uh, don't um, be. Okay. 2015, she turns to me. I think we were in her kitchen and says, as a joke, we should do weed cookies, Jeff. And she's laughing. And I said, Roberta, this is an amazing idea because it's 2015, 2016 is coming, and California is voting to legalize cannabis. And we all knew it was going to pass, and so it was being you know, very much talked about. And I said, I think that's a great idea. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm a bit entrepreneurial. Mm-hmm. So I said, I want to do this. And she said, good luck <laughs> and have a nice day. I'm not interested. Uh, I, I have a deal with the Starlight Foundation. Starlight cannot find out that I'm making cannabis cookies, um, which I think actually they would have probably loved it, but that's, that, that was then. So um, she said, I'll, I'll teach you how to make the cookies. You can do your thing, but uh, I'm not in. So I learned how to bake these chocolate cookies, and um, I'm going, going to town in my kitchen, and I, I um, at the time, in 20. 2015, the cannabis industry was uh, it was very mature in the um, on the illegal side or the mm-hmm. the sort of sort of legal because it was a sort of legal business in California, but it was not uh, there was no uh, oversight, there was no government regulation, mm-hmm. so um, it was very collaborative in those days. And so I could go to a a meeting or a breakfast or what have you and say tell people what I'm interested in doing, and they're like, oh, you should meet so and so, and you should meet so and so. So, you know, in pretty short order, I had a source to find the, the, the oil to, to uh, infuse into the cookies. And I was off to the races and I had found this marketing company that um, has since grown into a huge company. But at the time uh, they were very excited about the idea. We decided to, to do them as mini cookies instead of a big cookie. And I brought Roberta to this meeting at the marketing agency that I wanted to sign with and help them have them help launch the brand. And she stands up about halfway through the meeting and she says, I'm in. I'm 100% in. This is amazing. Because she saw the opportunity. Because it was like getting in. The guys at the marketing agency said, you're, you're not on the ground floor. You're on about the first floor or on about the second floor of a 100-story building. You're on the second floor of this cannabis industry. So she saw, she got a whiff of like the potential here. And she also saw the writing on the wall with Audrey's cookies that she's competing against frickin' Pepperidge Farm and Nabisco who spend, you know, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars advertising. Right. And it's pretty big ocean to compete in. So she saw that this was a much smaller pond and that we had a really tangible idea and a great product. So, so now Roberta's in as well. So uh, fast forward, you know, we honed our product and, we used to go door to door to the dispensaries with our cookies and say, do you want to, you know, um, I should also mention that, you know, we, we had a different name uh, and I spoke to a trademark attorney who told me that you're going to be fighting people over your trademark because it was a pretty generic name. Uh, and they said, you know, you need to come up with something original. So we're, we both, you know, sharpened our pencils and we're making lists of names. And I'll remember this too. I was at my office, my music production company, and she was driving, and I called her up, and I said, "Yeah, I've got all these names, and you know, I was thinking even like like a like a person's name, like like you know, Steve's cookies or Nathan's cookies or whatever." And I even came up, I said, "Norman's cookies," 
you know, our dad's name, right. Norm's Cookies. She, she goes, what about Norm's? Norm's Cookies. I said, what about Dr. Norm's Cookies? And it was like, boom. It was uh, like one of those things where you say it yeah. and then you mm-hmm. get the hairs on the back of your neck, yep. you know, rise up. Yep. So we both knew that was it. So Dr. Norm's Cookies was born. And um, I don't know where I'm going with this whole story. But um, so we we um, started selling them. I, I will, unless you want to inter- ask me a question or something, I'll, I'll just, I'll say also what our mentality was when we decided that we wanted to do this. We looked at what was out there in the market. So, you know, now we're talking about cannabis edibles. So these mm-hmm. are cookies that get you high for those out there that, <laughs> that don't know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, there explain was a, it. Yeah, yeah. A, well, I mean, they're infused with THC. Yeah. And so it's basically to, you know, with marijuana or cannabis, yeah. you can smoke it. You can take it as a liquid tincture. You can ingest it as an edible, which would be like a cookie or a brownie or a gummy. And now there's a million different products. Yeah. Um, and so, so this is the edible version of cannabis. And so we tried different edible products out there, and we couldn't believe how bad they tasted. So your, your basic edible at a store, there were these very funky, dark stores, and uh, the edibles would be wrapped in saran wrap with a sticker on it. Oh, lovely. And and it really did not look safe. And so we're just like, man, there's got to be, like, th- this could be so much better. So we, we couldn't believe how bad they tasted. So, so number one with Dr. Norms, we set out to make a, a really great tasting edible. So we knew our cookies were great tasting. So how do we make them? So we found this stuff called distillate, which is a distilled version of cannabis oil. At the time, it was outrageously expensive. And it was very new and very hard to get. But we came across some, and we tried it in our cookies, and it was amazing because you didn't taste that cannabis taste. Mm-hmm. So that was number one, was like we we're on our way with like we're going to make a great-tasting cookie edible cannabis product. Number two was in those days, they were very, 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 very strong, very potent. And say you would buy a cookie at one of these stores – you would, a cookie would say like 300 milligrams or 500 milligrams, and you didn't even know if that was correct or not because there was no regulation ah, uh, okay. and really no proof of lab testing or anything. So you're sort of on your own. So you would break off a piece of a cookie, and you have no idea what you're getting in terms of your milligrams that you're taking. So being children of a doctor and a pharmacist, we're right. like, this doesn't make any sense either. It's like when you take a Tylenol, you know you take, you know, it's whatever, 200 milligrams or in a Tylenol yeah. tablet. Right. You don't take 16 of them. You take one because you know that's that's how it is. So we thought, like, this makes no sense, that you could run the risk of – and everybody has a story about cannabis edibles where they took too much yeah. and they didn't know it, and they wound up on the floor for two days, and they said, I'll never do it again. Yeah. So we decided that we wanted to kind of pro- proceed in the face of all that and say to the public, we are all about responsible dosing. So we wanted to make, instead of a big cookie that you broke a piece off and had no idea what you're getting, we wanted to make responsibly dosed cookies. So we went with a mini cookie with a precise amount of THC in it so you knew exactly what you were getting. And we coined this phrase, uh, which we trademarked, called Know Your Dose. Right. So we're sort of preaching to the public saying, be responsible. Like, you wouldn't believe it. You ask people, like, so what do you take? How many milligrams do you take when you do an edible? Nobody could answer the question. They're like, oh, I don't know. I just wow. sort of break off the piece. And wow. So a lot has changed since those days, you know, since it's become legal and recreational and there's oversight with uh, the government. Um, it's a whole, whole different ballgame. But, you know, back then we were a little bit ahead of our time, too, because we were taking a, a really different cut at it. And so we came out with these low-dose cookies, which nobody wanted to buy because they weren't very potent. But they were dose per cookie. We had know-your-dose. We had a delicious cookie. And so those were the the humble beginnings, and we started to sell those door-to-door in 2017. And I'll stop now. And That's sort of the, the, the chronology of Dr. Norms. Well, I think for me on your site, you make that very clear, know your dose. I mean, I have that pretty big in my notes here because it is crucial. It really is very, very important in, in the fact that I, your site is um, – it's very pretty. Your packaging is, I'm all, you know, packaging. Uh, it, it's all very inviting. Uh, the, your 
the photo that you have of you and Roberta with the, you know, the products there, it's all very, very inviting, but it's also very informative. And when you read it, uh, we'll talk about how to get to your website and stuff. But um, you you feel like there is such quality involved in all of this process uh, of of this product. And but you can't really go to a store now. Is that right? And you have to go. It's you don't really have a brick and mortar. Uh, is that right for your products right. now? So yeah. we're we're a so so and, and let me make a distinction too. So we. We're a cannabis company, so our products, and we're only sold in California on the cannabis side because you have to be a licensed can- cannabis manufacturer with the state of California, and you have to have a manufacturing you know, local license. In Ours is in Los Angeles, and then you have a state license. And so we're a manufacturer, and because cannabis is still illegal federally, but it's illegal basically state by state, whichever state chooses to legalize it, So, but we can't uh, – I can't – sell my cookies in, in, you know, in Florida, for example, without mm-hmm. going into business with a Florida manufacturer license holder. So they would manufacture our cookies for us using our recipes and all that. They would market it. They would sell it. They would go to dispensaries, you know, basically duplicate what we've done in California. Yeah. That's how it has to work right now. So, okay. um, so we sell our cannabis cookies in California. But we also, um, and I think this you were referring to this you know, earlier on, we got into the CBD market. Yeah. Uh, C- CBD is a is also a cannabinoid, which means it's a distinct compound or chemical that comes from the cannabis sativa plant. So THC is the can- the cannabinoid that gets you high. Mm-hmm. CBD is a prominent cannabinoid in the plant also, and it doesn't get you high, but it has a lot of very healing properties. Um, it, I mean, amongst other things, it's it's great for pain. It can really help you with sleep. It shrinks cancer cells. It lowers your blood pressure. It calms you. It's it's it works on depression, anxiety. Uh, it's a long list of benefits of CBD. THC has a lot of health benefits too. Um, so we really wanted to be able to bring our products to more people. So uh, we set up a CBD business alongside of our THC business, and that business at this point is not regulated. So we're able to sell off of our CBD website. We can sell to um, the whole country. So um, on that website, we sell not only our cookies, but we have a whole line of products, some that we manufacture, some that we work with manufacturers, and we give them our formulas, and they manufacture them for for us. So you mentioned our jelly beans. So we have CBD jelly beans. We have caramel chews. We have uh, five flavors of our cookies. We have uh, hemp. Uh, pre-rolls, we have um, tinctures, so there are the drops, the CBD oil drops that you can take. Uh, we have them also in a sleep tincture with melatonin. So we have a, a whole suite of CBD products, but it's a totally different business model because you can go to the website and buy direct from us, and we also sell to stores um, regionally so that, you know, you can buy our products in, you know, actually not a lot of stores, Um but we do have some stores out there that carry our products as well. You um, even have so something the, for pets, Jeff. I, I, you know, it's it's, uh, it, it's an oil, I, I think, or it's a, it mm-hmm. goes in their yep. food. Does it go in their food, right? They, you can put it in their food. You can. Some people are adventurous and try to put it under their dog's tongue, but that's, oh. that's a little bit of an adventure <laughs> for me. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, C, CBD is, ha, you know, all those benefits that I mentioned benefit animals just as well. So. They're great for anxiety, for digestion also. CBD is very helpful. So um, I'll just tell a, a very quick CBD story. So so I was a little bit, um, first of all, I was skeptical of the medicinal side of THC. Let me back up to THC for a second. So we got into this business, I have to confess, it was more looking at the opportunity mm-hmm. and that the fact that we wanted to, and I'm entrepreneurial and we wanted to do something fun and different and there was a great opportunity. So we start selling our THC cookies, and we start getting emails from people saying, like, oh, my God, my back pain went away with your cookies. I take one every night before bed. Or, oh, my God, my mother, I, got, I bought the cookies for her, and she, she's sleeping through the night now. Or I have, you know, I have um, you know, cancer, breast cancer, and I have no appetite, and I started taking your cookies, and now I'm eating again. So um, we're getting – 
because there are all these benefits to THC. Yeah. It is a medicine. This is a right. plant that has very specific, significant medicinal value to it. And we really had no idea because we did not grow up in that world. Yeah. Um, it was very much a recreational for me. Like I would, you know, you'd get high and have fun. <laughs> so, but yeah. I was not, never took it that seriously. When we, when we started getting all this feedback from people, we're like, oh, my God, we're really onto something. And it gave us a completely different sense of purpose because now we were doing something that was benefiting people. And we really didn't get into it knowing that as much as we discovered it. So it was like, wow. So, you know, we started hearing a lot about CBD and the benefits of CBD also. And CBD, you know, is not regulated, as I was saying. So we wanted to make our CBD products available. So we we decided to bake our cookies with CBD as well. And then because we could bring out all these other products in a much easier way than you can do with THC, um, because with THC, you have to pass stringent lab tests, and there's a lot of R&D that goes into it, and you have to manufacture everything. It's more complicated. Yeah. Um, so we, we developed this whole CBD line, and uh, lo and behold, CBD really helps people too. So we feel very gratified that we get to do something every day that um, most of the time is fun. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's a tough business. I, I won't yeah. lie to you and say that the, the cannabis side especially because it's so highly regulated yeah um it's so uh, competitive there's you know it's sort of like the gold rush mentality so it's you know you can achieve something with your brand and then all of a sudden people want to knock you off your perch yeah so yeah. um but we're very very fortunate to be doing something that uh really helps people well and your perch is it's doing pretty well because if i if my numbers here are accurate um you what have sold in i think one year two and a half million of your chocolate chip cookies is that is that an accurate number for the actual cook number of cookies yeah million probably You're, yeah probably in the actual cookies yes when it comes down to the cookie we've sold millions of cookies um that's not units of product but we we we've done okay you know we're we're growing we had um, we had a little bit of a setback in 2019. We we got three offers to buy our company, um, like bam, 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 and we weren't expecting to sell our company. We were very new still, but um, there was like a fever, uh, acquisition fever. And Roberta and I were not we're not youngsters. We're uh, she's turning. <clears throat> I shouldn't say this. She's turning. 60, <laughs> she may not 60. want you to say it. <laughs> she's turning 60 uh, in March, and I'm 61. And so we're not, you know, we've had other careers and we have grown kids. And right. um, so, uh, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, about selling. Hold on. What did you yeah, say? You're, the, well, we were talking about the, that you had had some offers to buy your company. Oh, offers, right. So we, we got involved with this company that gave us a really great offer. And we were very excited about it because we were going to work for them. We had a back end that we were going to really build the company. And it turned out that they just weren't. Uh, saying they weren't a good fit would be putting it extremely uh, okay. generously. They just, they all but destroyed our company. Um, oh no. And so we, oh. so we got the heck out. Um, but we, we really took a major dip in 2019. Mm -hmm. That That's actually when we focused on our CBD. So we did build up our CBD side, but our THC side, they, they lost us probably half of our customers. Oh no. Oh. Mm, They're supposed to be building our business and instead they absolutely torpedoed it. But oh, so, oh. so, but we got really back on track in, in uh, 2020, um, had a really great year building it all back together. Uh, we came out with a bunch of new products. We've innovated. We've uh, rebranded everything. So you'll see our new packaging, which is I'm so excited about coming out in about four weeks. Oh, that is um, exciting. Oh, I can't imagine it would be any better. I love your packaging, but I oh, can't it's, wait. It's, it's bright colors. It's, oh. it's, really, it's really fun. It's oh. really going to stand out, stand out on the shelves. You know what? So, I have to um, say that in 2020, I think in particular the the last year, your product talk about being needed to be where where we all were and we still are yeah. actually. Um, oh yeah. Just for a lot of things, so I mean your 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 mental health and and just oh so much so much uh, so needed. It's really uh, COVID as as horrible horrible as it is for a lot of sectors of the economy. The cannabis industry, I think, fared pretty well. Uh, because yeah, I can see that. 
people people are home and bored and need something to do, but also need to, you know, it's a it's a great um, as you just said for mental health. You know, it's, yeah, it's, uh, exactly. We're gonna yeah, you know we're gonna sit, we're gonna circle back uh, and talk about some more products uh, that I I want to ask you about. But sure. if you don't mind, if you have time, because I know you've had a really busy day, but uh, I'll talk just a little bit about your music, Jeff, because you there's a song that it, it it's the kind of song that when you hear it, it's so um, t- it touched it touches me every time I hear it. It's Lullaby for Isabella. That is such a beautiful, beautiful song. It's just. Uh, it has a specialness to it that I really love. But you play guitar, and classic guitar is kind mm-hmm. of your focus, isn't that right? Mm-hmm. Would you talk about um, that just a little bit? Sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you for picking that song out because um, Isabella is my younger daughter's name. Oh, so, and she that was mm. a little munchkin at the time. I think you're talking. Are you talking about a father's lullaby? That yep. Record? Mm-hmm. Yep. So, so that was an album that I did with Dave, um, and uh, we wrote, co-wrote that song, wrote a couple other songs together, and uh, we were actually nominated for a Grammy in 2003. 2003. God, that is so long ago. That so is Isabella, so cool, though. So it was Lullaby for Isabella, who is turning 19 uh, oh. this month. So in 2003, oh. so, so she was like one year old when we oh, wrote wow. that song. Hence the name Lullaby for Isabella. So um, that song is very, very near and dear to me. And oh, um, love it. I can um, everyone go to iTunes right now as soon as we finish and buy that song because it is heaven. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. You can go to Spotify and stream it for free, too. It's okay. <gasps> okay. Um, <laughs> we, it's a it's a different world now. It's all about streaming. That's um, true. That is but true. But thank you, thank you for the plug. Um, but it, it's a it's a song. and I do play um, nylon classical guitar on that. Um, a lot of my music with my brother Dave um, over the years, I really got into it just it just seemed to fit really well with the smooth jazz sound mm-hmm. that that he yeah. creates. Um, so um, yeah, I I play that that guitar on on a bunch of songs with Dave over the years and. One more thing that brings it back to family is my dear mother, I don't think I've ever told this story, uh, went to, (laughs) I love, I'm just having a moment here just like appreciating her because she went to Spain and maybe another country with my dad and maybe another couple. They traveled a lot, my folks. She comes back to to home and I I don't remember how old I was. She schlepped. That's a that's a Jewish word, schlep, meaning right. dragged around. Yeah. A this nylon guitar, handmade nylon guitar that she got in Spain for me, and brought it back to me. And it was a beautiful guitar, and it's a guitar that graced a lot of records and a million commercials that I wrote and recorded. And and I still have that guitar. And oh uh, wow! God bless her. Like what kind of mother? Because it's not like she bought it and shipped it back. She bought it in Europe. And wow. you know, traveling with a big, you know, guitar in a soft case, you know, I would think it would get broken. Yeah. God, God bless her. So anyway, that that was. That is such a sweet that, story. That's so sweet. You know, just shows you kind of her thoughtfulness. Um, I'm just having a moment re- re- recalling that right now because I hadn't really thought about that in a lot of years. So that was the guitar that I played. Uh, the Thank you. Guitar, and, and, Thank you. And I love that style that. of music. Well, I, I really do encourage everyone to go and and listen to your music, especially you know, you, the uh, Blackbird was also uh, it's also a really 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 nice song um, mm-hmm. that you do. Um, and that's the one that was um, nominated for a Grammy with Dave. Yeah, uh, we, exactly. we were nominated for best uh, per- instrumental performance. Uh, Dave has been nominated in that category seven times. I was nominated my one and only time that year. And that year we were up against uh, this guy no one's ever heard of called B.B. King. Oh, yeah. And um, <laughs> who, do you, who do you think won that year, Dave and Jeff or B.B. Mm, King? Let me I'll think. You, I'll give, <laughs> give you a, a hint. hint. It, wasn't, it wasn't us. So B.B. <laughs> won his, like, 1006 Grammy. And, you know, 
we were we were shut out. But and Dave has been nominated so many times in his career and has still has not won. That's right. not fair. That's not fair. But I it's have really to not. tell you, I'm going to back up to the BB King thing. You guys are in really good company. You can't ask for better company than that. So to sure, be in the sure category. Can. Yeah, no. so so kudos, absolute yeah. kudos for that. Thank okay, you. let's uh, let's come on back to uh, to your products because I'm interested and give me an update if you would um, on the uh, beverage enhancer. It's a syrup. Is that available yet? Not available yet. Okay. Um, we are working. We're working on a bunch of things right now uh so that's one of them um we just actually spoke to our uh how do we call it not a manufacturer i guess he's he's sort of a designer he's a whiz um and so we're i'm going to get a little technical here but we decided to make it um a nano emulsified syrup versus a, a regular syrup so it um it it's much more potent that way and it actually uh, takes away the the bad taste of the cannabis. So kind of like with our edibles, because it's such a concentrated am- uh, amount of cannabis in a small amount of liquid, it tastes terrible. So you do everything you can to cover up the, that taste with flavoring. And we decided that we wanted to um, innovate a little bit. And this, this guy has that technology. He has a relationship with this emulsification company, which he's, so it's a, it's a whole uh, like a three-way kind of partnership, but we're, we're going to work with them, and um, so it's going to taste great, and it's going to be you can use it in a beverage, or you could take it straight, or you can you know, put it on pancakes or what have you. So we're we're probably going to get to do a vanilla flavored one that you could put in coffee or oh. soft drinks or water, and then we're probably going to do a fruit flavored one also. Um, in addition to those, we're going to do uh, this is Roberta's idea. I have to give her credit. Um, a cold buster, we're going to call it. So it's going to be a THC-based um, syrup, but also with CBD in it and echinacea, golden seal, uh, maybe some other herbs. And so it's going to be medicine and medicine, if you get what wow. I'm saying. It's going. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be, you know, helpful for uh, for colds and flu and what have you. So we're really excited about that. So that's one product. Um, okay. But we're also, uh, we introduced a brownie uh, at the end of last year that has done incredible. Uh, so we're, that's a chocolate fudge vegan brownie. Mm. So we're adding uh, two more flavors. Now I'm going back to tipping my hat to Roberta again. Uh, so we have um, a peanut butter chocolate brownie and a blondie, which is a light colored, you know, non-chocolate brownie that mm. is has little pieces of salted caramel in it. Oh, so, it sounds so delicious. Good. Oh, oh so good. No. And then we also are um, a company called MedMen. Um, you probably haven't heard of them, but they're a very big uh, a chain of stores in California, and we have a very good relationship. They're probably our biggest customer. And they asked uh, – Roberta has a good relationship with their, their head buyer, and they asked her uh, if we would create a Rice Krispie treat. Um, sort of an, an old school, you know, because the brownies and Rice Krispie treats and all that, they that was like the OG, you know, weed products back in the day. It's like right. you made them in the kitchen and you wrapped them in, in, uh, in, in plastic and brought them to yeah. a party. Ah, oh, it's perfect. So we're doing a, a chocolate, a fruity, like a fruity pebbles and an original uh, oh. vanilla. And so those are coming okay. soon. Uh, and then we're also doing, there's a couple, oh, we're doing salted caramels. Uh, so they're going to be five 20 milligram caramels. So it's going to be a hundred milligram in a really cute tin. And another very quick story on that is we found, so <laughs> food manufacturing, you know, we, we didn't know nothing about it when we got into it and you sort of learn as you go. So to make something like caramels, uh, to wrap them and cut them and portion them and all that precisely, you can get, you can spend, let's just say you can spend a lot of money on food equipment. You can spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars finding machinery, probably multiple machines to do what you need them to do. Yeah. So she found this machine that was built in 1915. It's painted like fire engine red. It's made out of like iron and it sits on the floor. And this thing, 
it, it cuts the caramel, it, com- it portions it and wraps it and spits it out. And it's the loudest clanking piece of <laughs> blah, blah, blah that you, you've ever seen. Like I came in and saw this thing and I'm like, you got to be kidding. Like, we, we paid, instead of paying, you know, half a million dollars worth, I mean, it, it wasn't cheap. It was like 30 grand or something. And we had to put some money into it to fix it up. But it, it does the trick. It's called Big Red, and it, it, um, that's how we're making our, our salted caramels, and they are and delicious. You, you know, the funny thing about that, too, is that here's this machine built in 1915 that is still doing yeoman duty, still working away, and you can't get appliances today to last five years. You know, what does that say? No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. And there's this guy, there's this specialty guy that, like, he sort of checked it out because it was sort of on the on the market, and he – he went and, and flew to look at the machine for us, and then he said, well, I think you should buy it, but it's going to need about $5,000 worth of work. It needs a new motor. And blah, 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 blah. Sure enough, he fixed it all up, came out, showed us how to work it. So um, so anyway, we're doing the caramels, and then we're doing the syrup, as you mentioned, and then um, I think yeah, I mean, there's a couple other things in the offing, but we're, we're really excited because this has been a very productive – 2020 has been a very productive year, and 2021 is going to be – really exciting for us because we're now branching into a lot of new product categories. And, that is um, all very so, exciting. Yeah. So we want to really diversify because, you know, if you keep doing the same thing too long, they, they come nip at your heels and then they, they do knock you off your perch. So you got to keep, That's true. keep evolving and inventing. That is very true. Would you tell everyone how the best way to get to you and to you, to Roberta and to your products and, to um, uh, order sure. and so would you well it's sure you go to a corner your nearest corner um, intersection and you say to a guy that <laughs> might have long hair and a beard you say psst, psst, psst. hey where can I where can I get some weed can you fix no. me up <laughs> that's the old days no uh, boy but it's it's so funny because this this industry has just changed I'm sure a lot of your listeners do frequent uh, these, you know, cannabis stores. Right. And, yep. um, I haven't been to them in many states. I've been in, you know, maybe three or four states, you know, Nevada, Colorado, mostly on the West Coast. But um, it's amazing. At least they're, they're like Apple stores. I mean, it, it is just the bar has been raised so high and the products look amazing um, the way they're marketed and, and displayed in the stores. So it's like, you know, it, it literally is a kid in a candy store. So, um, so in, in California, um, well, uh, our website for our, on our cannabis site is drnorms.com. It's D O C T O R N O R M S spelled out drnorms.com. And you can see our cannabis products there. Um, and you can go, uh, to, there's a, a website called weed maps, uh, and you can go on weed maps and you can see what stores carry us. We're in about 200 stores throughout California. And also there's a delivery service that delivers throughout California called Ease, uh, E-A-Z-E. So it's, if you go to E-A-Z-E dot com, you can find Dr. Norm's products and you can have them delivered to wherever you are. They deliver okay. all throughout the state. Um, then on the CBD side, you can go to Dr. Norm's, this time initial, D-R-N-O-R-M-S C-B-D, Dr. Norm's CBD dot com. And that's our CBD website. So you can order directly from us. You can see all of our products and place an order. And um, what we should do, actually, is we should create a coupon code, as I'm thinking about this, for your listeners okay. so they can get a discount. So I'm going to make the coupon code up right now. What is your podcast called? What's the name of it? GG in the 561. G-I-G-I. G-I-G-I. Mm-hmm. G-I-G-I. Okay, so, so we're going to call it – let's just call it GG20. So it's going to be okay. G-I-G-I-20. Okay. And then if they go to drnormcbd.com and put in the coupon code GG20, then they'll be able to get 20% off. Their awesome. Rate. That's fantastic. This is the first. This is a inventing a coupon code live oh my on goodness. a podcast. We got um, we, so no. Wow. We are groundbreaking. We got a story so, about your mom with a, with a guitar that you've never told, yeah, that, and now a coupon. Uh, Wow. So now I, I have to remember to call my web person and say, <laughs> create this coupon code before I forget. <laughs> I wrote it down. GG20. Um, I got it. GG20. Okay. Awesome. 
Now, how I, is it? How is it, Gigi? If your name isn't Gigi, or is it, is there a secret? Gigi? Well, no, it isn't uh, a secret. I have many nicknames, uh, but Gigi is my prized name that I I really love to be called. It's it's even on my uh, license plate. Uh, it's my granddaughter calls me Gigi. So, oh. um, that how old is, how old is she? She just turned eight. So, oh. yeah, she's That's beautiful. So cute. Oh, she she really oh. is. I mean, and I know, you know, how we are about these kids. But uh, we have one son and her, and that's it. And so, mm. um, yeah, and it's, there's nothing that I like more than to hear than to be called Gigi. So, of course, yeah. That's, well, uh, that's, our, that's our coupon code. Yeah, so I, I love it. Thank you for that. But thank you so much sure. for being here. Is there anything that you want to add that I have left out of our chat this evening? I think we have covered it and more. So I just really appreciate the opportunity to to uh, blabber on about Dr. Norms and all this stuff. And, and um, I really appreciate it. I, I know my brother Dave is huge fans of you and your husband. And uh, so I thank you guys so much for sort of adopting Dr. Norms. Uh, oh, absolutely. We're, we're, we're related huge fans. to Dave Cos. Um, <laughs> we you are. discovered Dr. Norton right through Dave's website, right? You discovered uh, Dr. Norton. Is that right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. And I said, we need to we need to know more. We need to know more. And so you have been uh, very gracious to us mm-hmm. as well. We appreciate that so much. And you've We're been big awesome fans. to us. So. So, so well, thank you so much. I thank really, you, Jeff. really enjoyed myself and um, really appreciate it. So thank you. Well, like I said, I know you've had a really busy day. And so for you to take time this evening to, to join me has been Wonderful. I'm very honored to have you here. And so uh, to my listeners, um, I want you to go and find their website and order. Use this coupon code. And always you can find all the information. You can find as well as on all the platforms, Spotify, Pandora, iTunes, many other platforms. You can always find the podcast at northpalmbeachlife.com. Don't forget that. You can also find the prior story that we have done about uh, Jeff and Roberta and Dr. Norms. So you need to go there and read that as well after you listen to this great podcast. And there will be a page on the website for this podcast where we will have more information. We will have links there also to their websites as well as photos so you can see what they look like, Jeff and Roberta. If we, 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 never, we never <laughs> talked about that. We, we, have, to, we have to go through – Heavy Photoshop before we do that. <laughs> yeah, I threw that one in there on you. <laughs> um, I had one other funny. As you're saying all this, I said, because you're saying, you know, our podcast. This today was a podcast, a P.O.T. podcast, not a yeah. podcast. P-O- okay. It's a pod- oh, I love that. that we may that have was, to use that, that in the headline. <laughs> yeah, that, was very, that was very corny. I'm, I'm good for a corny pun. I love that. I love, I, hey, I'm right there with you. Um, so anyway, everyone, thanks for being here And thanks for listening. Gary and I appreciate it so very much. And don't forget, stay tuned.